Here is an example that involves computing the population covariance for a pair of discrete random variables x and y. A fair coin is tossed twice. Let x be the number of heads that appear and y be the number of tails that appear. Find the population covariance between x and y. If we were looking at x alone and had a random experiment which is tossing a fair coin twice, from a previous chapter you would conclude that x is a binomial random variable with parameters n and p which in this case are two the number of trials and the probability of getting ahead is one half. Well you know that the expected value of x which I'll indicate here is mu sub x will be n times p and two times one half gives you one. But likewise, y is the number of tails that, were, that appear. So if I were looking at y alone, the univariate case, it will also be binomial. And it will have parameters n and p, which are again 2 and 1 half. And the mean of the random variable y will also be 1. Again, 1 half is the probability of um, tossing a tail. One half is the probability of tossing a head because you are looking at a fair coin. Now the next thing to look at is the joint distribution of x and y. You start with a picture here. You know that the number of heads x can either be 0, 1, or 2. Likewise, the number of tails y will either be 0, 1, or 2. The mass values here, the, so the values in the support, could be two heads, which means you will get zero tails. Or you could get one head and one tail. Or you could get zero heads and two tails. Those three points there are the only possibilities. So those three comprise the support script A. Notice that in this case, that is not a product space. Furthermore, once you know x, you know y. And y equals 2 minus x is a linear function. That corresponds to the 45 degree line going through right here. This script A can be written out formally as the set of all x and y, such that x, y equals either 0, 2, 1, 1, or 2, 0. This leads to a joint probability mass function of x and y, which says the probability of getting zero heads and two tails is one fourth. The probability of getting one head and one tail is one half, and that is doubled up because you can go heads, tails, or tails, heads. And then finally, the probability of getting two heads and zero tails is also one fourth. Well, what we want here is the population covariance. So here it is. The covariance of x and y is the expected value of x minus its mean. Well, what is the mean of x? The mean of x is 1. x minus 1 <coughs> times y minus its mean. Well, the mean of y is also 1. Now, in this particular case, because we have discrete random variables, we are going to be computing a double summation here. And that double summation will be computed over the support script A. And since we want the expected value of x minus 1 times y minus 1, this will be x minus 1 times y minus 1 times the joint probability mass function f of x, y. We have three different values that we need to compute this quantity over. This top line here will be the first one that we do. So when we plug in x equals 0 and y equals 2, we get 0 minus 1, which is negative 1, and 2 minus 1, which is positive 1, 
multiplied by f of 0, 2, which is 1 fourth. So in this case, we get negative 1 times positive 1 times 1 fourth, which is negative 1 fourth. Now, in the second case, that is this middle line here, x equals 1, y equals 1, so we get 1 minus 1, which is 0, times 1 minus 1, which is also 0, times f of 1, 1, which is 1 half, so 0 times 0 times 1 half is 0. Then finally, for the last piece, that is x equals 2 and y equals 0, we get 2 minus 1, which is positive 1, multiplied by 0 minus 1, which is negative 1. So 1 times negative 1 times f of 2, 0, which is 1 fourth, gives you a negative 1 fourth. So negative 1 fourth minus 1 fourth is negative 1 half, and that is the population covariance. Now one quick interpretation of the sign of the covariance here. Notice that when x is above its mean, well the mean of x is 1, and so the only time when it's actually above its mean is right here. Well when x is above its mean, y is below its mean, and so here we have those two variables on opposite sides of their means. If you look over here, this is where x is below its mean, and when x is below its mean, y tends to be above its mean, and that is an interpretation of this negative on the, uh, <coughs> on the population covariance. Finally, when we move forward to the population covariance, which is the next topic after we finish off um, covariance, we'll move to correlation. If you ever have a situation like this where all of the mass for a particular discrete uh, distribution falls on a line that has negative slope, the correlation will be negative 1. If all of the mass falls on a line that has positive slope, then the correlation will be positive 1. So in this particular case, the correlation between x and y will be negative 1.